guys, uh, before the video starts, I want to let you guys know that I'll be releasing two more videos in the next few days. Uh, that would be the review of Bumblebee and Mortal Engines. They'll be coming probably Monday, Tuesday time. So yeah guys, stay tuned for those videos and take care. <laughs> Alright guys, so today we'll be looking at the film Aquaman, directed by James Wan, starring Jason Momoa, Amber Heard, and a bunch of other people, which, let me just say, it's endless. I didn't even realize that there were a lot of people in this movie, but there are a lot of people, so let's get straight into the good. Alright guys, so we're gonna start off with the hand-to-hand -hand combat in this movie. So just strictly talking about the hand-to-hand -hand combat where we've got two people, or three, or four, or five, doesn't matter fighting close by in close range that was actually pretty good in the movie it was handled great the framing was actually pretty good both people in shot the camera was never rapidly cutting we don't have these this crazy editing or you know people the camera hiding behind somebody's back or you know clearly hiding a stunt actor or anything like that the fight scenes were actually really well choreographed and filmed uh well done I'm not going to talk about the actual, you know, CGI battles, I'll talk about that later in the review, but just now, strictly talking about the hand-to-hand -hand combat with just a few people fighting and all that kind of stuff, it was actually pretty good, I liked it, it was very entertaining. So the next great thing about this movie is actually the structure of the scenes and the way the way the scenes are laid out, so, you know, how, which scene comes first, how they, how they're, essentially the storyboarding of the movie, it's done really well, I'm not going to lie. There's, you know, it's not it's not an obvious, you know, beginning, middle, end kind of story because when we saw the trailers, we obviously see him as a kid and, you know, we see him as a teenager and then adult. So what we're thinking is that it's going to be beginning, middle, end, him as a kid and then a teenager and then an adult. That's not how it's structured. Actually, it's actually, you know, it's it's the, the movie starts with him as an adult, but it just carries on like that. It just cuts between his past in really interesting ways. I'm not going to tell you how it does it. The way it cuts to his past, it's not like it just cuts, it integrates the current scene that we're in to the past scene, so it just, it's kind of like what's happening in the past is kind of reflecting what's happening in the current time, which is actually done really well, it's actually, I've never seen that done before in any movie, so kudos to you, uh, James Wan, great job. Uh, aside from that, yeah, the structure is done, the structuring, sorry, is done really well, beginning, middle, end, all that's great. Now, similarly to my review of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I mentioned the pacing and I talked a little bit about how pacing is supposed to be thought of and, you know, it's not, slow pacing is not bad, fast pacing is not bad. Any pace can be good as long as it's done well. And in the case of Aquaman, what they do with the pacing is they kind of work off of the tone because the tone at different times of the movie is very different and I'll talk about that in my negative side of the review. But strictly talking about the pace, the pacing, what the pacing does is it bounces off the tone of the movie at that moment and has that kind of pace. You know, there's a, a portion of the film where it's a very slapstick, it's got these very slapstick kind of humor. We're in the desert and, you know, we're in Italy, in Sicily, and it's very slapstick and it just plays off of the tone and off of the tone, sorry, yeah. So it just plays off the tone and the pacing is just as a result of that, so it's a very fast-paced film. But then there are times when they're fighting in very deep and dark places. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but kind of in towards the third act, they're in a very dark place. And the pacing there is very slow, very somber, very, it's very toned down. And that, that it's a great thing that they, they bounce the pacing off of the tone. So that pacing is a result of the tone, so it's, it's not consistent which I, I tend to like pacings to be consistent in movies, but it's actually done well. It, it breaks that fold and it paces the movie really well to where in each scene where the tone changes, you're still entertaining, you're still, you're still hooked to the movie. You're never lost in the movie, which is really good. So you know, there's been a lot of problems with DC movies in the past. Some DCEU movies have had bad characters, some have had bad stories, some have just been bad films. But the one thing I could not blame the DCEU movies about are the scores, the musical composed orchestral scores. I mean, they're really, really good. Aside from Batman vs Superman, which, which it just feels, it just, it's kind of eh, it doesn't have anything to it. All the other scores are great. 
Man of Steel has a great score, probably the best in the DCEU. Wonder Woman has a really good score. Um, Suicide Squad, is his, the score in that movie is kind of, it's mixed with the actual orchestral score and some songs that are thrown in to actually fit with the movie. And Aquaman does kind of does the same thing with songs, but I had a problem with the songs themselves, so I'm going to put that in the, my negative side of the review. But in terms of the score itself and the composed score, I think it was composed by Rupert Gregson Williams, who had done Wonder Woman in the past, he'd done Hacksaw Ridge, Legend of Tarzan, I'm not sure what else he's done, but those films kind of had, like, especially Hacksaw Ridge, that has a really neat score. And with this film itself, you can tell that the score is just meant to hype the film. It just builds up and builds up to this awesome moment where it just feels grand and the audience is applauding and everything is going on. It just, it felt awesome. All right. You, it was badass in the words of Jason Momoa. Uh, yeah. So just, if you guys want to check out the composer, he's a really great composer. He's got some really great other, you know, side scores on uh, YouTube that you could check out and listen to. They're pretty good. And the Aquaman score is no less no less than any of those there it's pretty good so like i said before one of the biggest problems with the dceu is that the characters don't feel like heroes they don't have this heroic sense to them you know in man of steel you know we have superman destroying buildings and not even caring about the characters who are on the ground suffering which heightens heightens the stakes but just makes superman feel like a a hero that doesn't care so he's essentially not a hero uh, aside from Wonder Woman, all the other superheroes don't really feel like heroes, you know. Uh, Justice League kind of tried to show the heroic side to Batman by making him give uh, Flash the speech and, you know, showing his his uh, heroic side, kind of, but not really. I feel like Wonder Woman was the first step towards that, but even then, there were not many scenes showing Wonder Woman with other civilians for the most part she was either in a battlefield or somewhere secluded there's one scene but that's the only one in this movie they they they're ex they're essentially just showing the audience this is essentially a trailer to the audience letting them know that these are heroes aquaman is a hero there's a 20 minute scene you know that takes place in atlantis and then to sicily in italy where they have this uh sequence where they're fighting and then you can see just how they show aquaman saving people he goes out of his way he's getting hit in like he's getting punched in the back but he's still helping kids up and he's helping adults and he's helping grandmas and saving kittens from trees you know this 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 is the hero heroic side to aquaman that we needed to see so we could connect to him and we did connect to him through this movie and that's something that I have got to praise James Wan for, is that he brought the... You know, people often say that the problem with the DCEU is that it's dark, and I disagree. <clears throat> a dark DCEU does not mean a good or bad DCEU. What's bad is if the sense of the characters, what makes the characters great, is just stripped away. Superman is, you know, he's the American dream. He's the man who saves the Americans. That's him. But when you strip that away and make him this brooding, you know, person that just grites all the time and grouches all the time, it doesn't really, the character is all of a sudden gone. So the problem with the DC is, has always been the characters and the characterization of these characters. And Aquaman just finds a way to put a nail in the coffin to the previous DCEU films and say, you know what, screw that, we're going to do our own thing. And that's something I've got to praise it for because... Now we've got a character who actually feels like a hero. Alright, let's take a look at the mixed side of this review. So there are really only two mixed aspects to this movie, which I just think are the song choices and the uh, fact that Mira and Aquaman meet for the first time in this movie. Now, let's talk about the latter. If you've seen Justice League, you know that Mira and Aquaman have met in that movie. And clearly in that movie, Aquaman does not have the trident, he has the quindent. So what that means is, Aquaman is set before Justice League. And if in Aquaman, Mira and Aquaman are meeting for the first time, that just means that Justice League didn't happen. It just They just threw it out the window, it didn't happen. Because if you watch Justice League, you know that in that movie, Mira and Aquaman, they're talking and they act like they've known each other in the past and in this movie they actually meet for the first time 
it's like there's it's literally a scene when one goes hello how are you my name's this hi my name's this and they just get to know each other for the first time they haven't known each other in the past so i don't know if this is a matter of you know continuity issues or just a matter of james wan closing the books on justice league and going you know what sorry this is our own movie and we're going to change what we're changing either way they should have a sense of continuity. There should be bigger leadership in, you know, Warner Brothers and the TCU to hold everything together like glue and just make sure continuity is being held. And that's the reason I put in the mix is it's not, it's not a bad thing. It definitely doesn't add to the film, but it doesn't take away from the film either. So, you know, I wouldn't categorize it as something bad, but I would have preferred to see better continuity. And talking about the song choices, they were just I didn't I didn't get them maybe it's just me but there's a there's a sequence when they're in a plane and they're flying over a desert and i swear to god they're playing the song i think it's i think it's a cover of africa you know and it's a cover by pitbull i think it is and I'll, it's just why would you throw that in the movie i mean it just it just threw me off guard i didn't know what they were playing and there's two other songs there's i can't remember what the second song was it takes place in sicily in italy and it's kind of like a romantic song and it's the movie becomes a romance all of a sudden and Aquaman's looking at Mira and then it just becomes weird and then there's a third song that happens later in the movie which come on the song choices they, they didn't like I said they don't, they don't add to the movie but they don't take away from the movie either so they just did not add to the movie at all okay now let's take a look at the negative side of this review you know I think all the villains in the DCEU have been terrible Except Man of Steel who had Zod. Going into Aquaman, I had faith in them because, you know, going in we knew that the uh, that the main villain, King Orm, would be Aquaman's half-brother so there could be something there. But it just, they did not give the right amount of time to these characters. I think in total we spent like 20 minutes of screen time with both villains combined. Man Black Manta did not even deserve to be in this movie. He was given like three minutes of screen time. And King Orm just he was just a mustache twirling villain who just came in for the bad scenes and then walked right out because they did not have the time to designate to him. I've heard Kevin Feige in the past say that the reason Marvel has bad villains is because they focus on the protagonists and they leave the antagonists aside. And I think that's showing in the DCEU where they're focusing on the protagonist, you know, in Wonder Woman, they focus on Wonder Woman, in Justice League, they focus on the Justice League, and in this movie, they focus on Aquaman. But they do throw the villains to the wayside. And I think that there is a blend, Marvel has been showing the blend rate lately with, you know, Black Panther. I think that Black Panther had the best villain in the MCU. I think that Infinity War has a really great villain. I think that even Ant-Man and the Wasp had a really good villain. I think that Marvel has gotten the pace where they can have good villains and good heroes. And by good I mean well developed characters. In the DCEU they haven't gotten that vibe yet. So they just need to get on a roll and just see where it takes them and eventually they will get that villain uh, problem worked out but so far I think they just did not even focus on the villain for this movie because you know Black Manta has nothing to do in this movie. You might as well replace him with any character and it would have been the exact same story. So he was essentially inconsequential. And King Orm just did, did not have enough screen time for me to care about him. They tried to make us care, but they should have given him more screen time, given a backstory there. Because they do give, they do try to get us to empathize with him, but we can't empathize with something that we don't know though. So they should have given a little bit more screen time to King Orm and thrown Black Manta out of the movie, just given the screen time to King Orm so we could connect to the character even more for that, you know, heartbreaking ending. But I digress. Could have been better, but whatever. It's whatever it is. All right, kids, out of the subjective scale, this movie is the $10, $10 deal. 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 All right, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for checking this video out. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Comment down below. Um, I'll be uploading another review tomorrow. That will be Mortal Engines. Uh, it's coming out tomorrow, at five o'clock uh, Central Time. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Take care, guys. <laughs> Same year I bought a crib too Now my face in magazines I used to flip through And my music on all the sites I used to sift through Remember meeting Nas for the first time Shook his hand and he started quoting my lines